Tantrum House's Top 10 Gateway Board Games. Thank you for joining us today at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Kevin Delp. And I'm Melissa Delp. Today we're talking about some of our favorite gateway games. These are the games that you can use to introduce people into the board gaming hobby. We're doing this video a little differently. We're going to share our top tens, but for each we're going to share a similar game, but with simpler mechanics so that when someone takes it off the store shelf, they can learn it all by themselves. Now we decided not to include party games in this list. So Things like Just One, Telestrations, Wits and Wagers. Mm -hmm. Those are awesome they games, are. lots games. of fun, easy to teach, but not in this list. The games that we have chosen, we tried to pick ones that were reasonably priced so that there wouldn't be sticker shock when mm -hmm. someone goes to try to get them. And we will have some honorable mentions at the end of the video. Let's get started. Number 10. So we have Century Spice Road from Plan B Games. This is for two to five players and plays in about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think the short play time can help with getting people into a game. Basically, you're playing as spice merchants who are taking cards from the market and then playing those cards to get different types of spices and upgrading your spices all for the goal of turning in those spices for orders for points. I like this one for a number of reasons. It's like a simpler form of deck building and you can, instead of shuffling your deck of cards, you are just having a hand of cards and just using those cards in your hand, getting some more mm -hmm. cards in your hand by getting the spices to get more cards and things like that to get the points. So I really like the mm -hmm. flow of the game. Right. It makes sense, I think, logically. Yeah, what you do on your turn is pretty simple. You're either taking a card, playing a card to get those spices, or turning in spices to get a point card. So it's pretty simple what you need to do, but there is still a good bit of strategy of how to combo those cards I love for it. your actions. I love the comboing. <laughs> now, if Spice Merchants isn't, you know, a very interesting theme I for like you. the theme. I like the theme. <laughs> there is another version called Gollum Edition, and this is more fantasy. You have these Gollum earth monsters and crystals that you're trying to get. Now, the simpler version is mm. Splendor from Space Cowboys. It's for two to four players and has set collection and resource management and also plays in about 30 minutes. Throughout the game, you're collecting different colored gems to gain cards that give you more gems and points. This one is super easy to understand how the game plays because it's very linear in the gameplay. Collect gems to collect more cards that give you more gems and to get points. <laughs> right. It's very simple to learn. The rules are very simple and it plays quickly and you can play it as casually or competitively mm -hmm. as you want. This game has won a lot of board game awards and one of my favorite parts in the game are the components. These plastic chips are pretty cool. Number nine. Lanterns by Foxtrot and Renegade Game Studios. This is for two to four players and plays in about 30 minutes. It's a tile placement game where you are placing your tiles into a common pool and gaining cards that you then use for sets to turn in for points. Now, kind of like dominoes, you want to match the mm -hmm. sides of oh, the yeah. tiles because you're going to get more cards that way. Lanterns is such a relaxing looking game with beautiful lanterns. And I love introducing it to people because it's easy to understand and play and players are involved on every single turn. And that's because when you lay a tile, the other players also get cards based on the side that is facing them. That is if there are cards <laughs> of true. that color. So even though it can be relaxing, you can also play it fairly competitively as you're trying to complete your sets and potentially deny other players the cards that they need for their sets. The simpler version for us is King Domino from Blue Orange. This is for two to four players and plays in about 20 minutes. It's tile placement and very similar to Domino's. Players build their own kingdom by creating a five by five grid of tiles 
to gain the most points. You're trying to connect similar land types together with lots of crowns too. Now, I think this is a really great game for families mm. because it is so simple and easy to play. You're picking a tile and you're putting it into your kingdom. Number eight, King of Tokyo from Yellow. This is for two to six players and plays in about 30 minutes. You're this has a dice rolling Yahtzee style mm -hmm. game to it. You play as a monster trying to destroy Tokyo and your opponents. So you roll dice to gain points, to gain energy, to attack other monsters, and to heal yourself. Now this game says it's recommended for ages eight and up. I actually think a six or seven year old can easily pick it up. I mean, you're rolling these big mm -hmm. chunky dice and it sort of has a Yahtzee feel because you can roll your dice up to two times. So really easy to understand and play. Yeah, and the company has produced several expansions and other monster packs, mm. even some power cards that you can add to the game that ups the complexity a little bit. There is a new Dark Edition, too. It has new art and a new mechanism. Now, there is player elimination in this game, but it's such a quick game that players aren't going to be waiting around forever for it to end. And I do think kids especially really love this game because they get to pick their own monster. <laughs> so a game that is simpler than King of Tokyo is, for us, Las Vegas from Ravensburger. It's for two to five players and plays in about 30 minutes. Now, it doesn't have the Yahtzee mechanic that King of Tokyo has, but it does have dice rolling. And when you're rolling your dice, you are placing your dice on the matching casinos. At the end of a round, if you have more dice at a casino than other players, then you're gonna get lots of money. And I like the decisions on should I place all my dice or lots of dice at one casino, or should I try and spread out and see if I can win lots of casinos. Right, that has a bit of a push your luck aspect mm -hmm. to the game because you do have to place one set of dice each turn mm -hmm. and it's all of that type. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do you lock down the casino early with a bunch of dice or do you try to take lots of turns but you have no idea where you're gonna end up having to place those final dice? Might be good, might be bad. I think this game is great in the gateway category because it has easy rules, it's very simple to play, and people could pick this up off the shelf and learn it themselves. Number seven. Camel Up from Eggert Spiel. Now this is for three to eight players mm -hmm. and it plays in about 30 to 45 minutes. You're betting on different camels that are racing around this track trying to figure out which one's going to come in first and second. There is a cool pyramid that has dice in it, one for each camel, and when you open up that pyramid, it's going to show you which camel moves in how many spaces. This is actually the first edition of Camel Up. There is a newer edition that has new artwork, and I think a sturdier, better pyramid. This game is really draws people in with like the experience of the game. It has what I ha what I call stand up moments where people are like just really drawn and they stand up at like those times when the die comes out that is the right color that pushes the camel that they bet on like ahead or past the finish line. Yeah, or the opposite. <laughs> they <Definitely> groan too. <laughs> this draws attention when we play it in a like public place because mm -hmm. of how vocal and emotional the players can get in it. I think a great thing about this game is it does play up to eight players. So you can amazing. get a lot of people involved. And again, the rules are really simple to play. Now, the games games that we chose that have even simpler mechanics are two. We have No Thanks from Amigo and For Sale from Eagle Griffin. For Sale is for three to six players and plays in about 30 minutes. Players are bidding for real estate cards in phase one, and then in phase two, they're selling their properties for the highest amount that they can. Everyone starts with the same amount of money, which I think is interesting because you have to decide what properties do I want to go after? Do I go after those higher value properties or do I go after the cheap ones and try to sell them for higher later? Right, because when you drop out of the bid, that's when you take the card. It might be a great one, might be a low one. And I do really enjoy the art in this game. It's very cute and each card has an animal integrated into it. Now, very similar to For Sale in some ways is No Thanks. Now, it's in this game, everyone starts with their with uh, a, a the hand same of chips. yeah same hand of number of chips in their hand, and as these numbered cards are coming out, you don't want 
these high numbers because basically you don't want points right. in this game. Right, so you say no thanks by putting your chip <laughs> out. But the chips are good, so at some point you may decide there's enough chips on this card that I'm going to take worth it. it. Or maybe you want the card, but you don't think other people want it, so you send it around the table hoping to get chips and that someone else doesn't decide to take it. And I think the other interesting thing is the at the end of the game, having a run of cards is actually worth it because you only count the lowest number in that run. Number six. So Baron Park from Lookout Games. This is for two to four players. It plays in about 30 to 45 minutes. This is a tile laying game with the theme of building your own bear zoo. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to be placing Tetris-like tiles on your board, and when you cover certain symbols on the board, that determines what types of tiles you take for your next turns. And you are trying to lay high point tiles to get points, mm -hmm. and you're trying to fill your board so you can put down bear statues, which are also worth points. I love the bear theme too. To me, I, I really like that. There's just so many different kinds of bears. They even have panda bears, which technically aren't bears, but they do address that in the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, everyone loves pandas. Of course. I think the theme is approachable with the making the zoo for bears, so that will appeal to people. The gameplay is also easy. You lay a tile on your turn, and whatever you cover, that's what you take. You do have to be kind of efficient, though, because if you can fill your boards quicker you will get higher valued statues yep. and you do need to make sure that you're leaving space for those shaped tiles. So the simpler game that we chose with this tile laying mechanic is Carcassonne. This is for two to five players, plays in about 45 minutes, it's from Z-Man Games. Players are drawing and placing tiles contributing to the French landscape of Carcassonne and placing their meeples on those tiles. Now you have to make the decision when you place your tile, whether you're going to place your meeple on it or not, you have a limited number of meeples in your pool, so you sort of have to be selective. Right, and you're putting them on cities to be like knights yes. and roads to be thieves <laughs> so that or theme going in church, there. like cloister, and if something gets finished, then your meeple comes back to you mm -hmm. and you can use them again but not everything gets finished during the game. So sometimes, especially like the farmers, they stay out there the whole game. Yeah, now the original name Meeple mm -hmm. came from Carcassonne, so that's kind of a little bit of information that now you know. Number five. Dominion from Rio Grande Games. This is for two to four players, mm. plays in about 30 to 45 minutes. Each player starts with an identical deck of cards, 10 cards that they are gonna have in their deck but then they can buy more cards throughout the game. There are 10 cards out on the table, yep. and those cards are gonna give you more money, or they're going to give you actions, and you're doing all of that to make your deck more powerful so you can buy victory point cards <laughs> and have the most points by the end of the game. I love Dominion, and I love that it's very replayable because every game you're putting out different types of cards out in the market. Right, so you can make it more complex, less complex, you can make it very friendly, you can make it very mm -hmm. attacky, yeah. depending Me. on the cards you choose. <laughs> and there are tons and tons of expansions, yeah. and each of those expansions add more cards that you can choose. But each game, you're only putting out 10 options. Yeah, I really love that. So we chose a game for the simpler uh, deck building mm -hmm. mechanic, and that was actually two games, the Harry Potter deck building game, and then Star Realms from White Wizard Games. This is for two to four players. The interesting thing about the Harry Potter deck building game is that it's cooperative. And that means you're all working together to beat the game. So there's that, which I think helps bring people in. And I think the other thing is that it starts out simple. And then you're building up to harder and harder games because you're unlocking boxes. Right, there's seven boxes, one basically for each book, and it gets progressively harder and they introduce more mechanics. So it's a great entry level. Also, you get to play as the characters right. from the movie, so <laughs> there's that tie-in with theme. So yeah, so the theme for mm -hmm. Harry Potter brings me to another deck building, mm -hmm. cooperative deck building game from the op that uses the same theme it uses toys. the same mechanic, Sorry, but a different <laughs> theme. Thank you. Melissa corrects me on that one. The same uh, mechanic, the co-op deck building game, but a different theme, is Toy Story, the deck building game. 
And there are a little bit of little nuances in this mm -hmm. one. I would actually say um, if you don't care about either, like if you like both themes and you had to choose one to sort of be entry level, I actually would choose Toy Story over the mm -hmm. Harry Potter one because I think there's a it's a little bit maybe a little bit easier. Yeah, personally. but they're but they're both great, especially if you're wanting to get uh, kids or teens into deck building. Yes. So the other one that we just mentioned real quick is Star Realms. Star Realms is two player only. You can get extra packs to play up for more. But basically what you're doing is you are collecting spaceships and uh, space bases and it is a space theme where you're just basically battling each other trying to whittle the other person's points down to zero first. Yeah, so basically more head-to-head -head battle game but you're building up your deck and comboing cards. Lots of people love it. It's pretty uh, simple and well-loved. Number four. Pandemic from Z-Man Games. This is for two to four players, plays in about 45 minutes, mm -hmm. and it is a cooperative game where you are trying to save the world from a pandemic that is spreading across the land. But even though you're all working together, you all have separate roles like scientist and medic and operations expert. So you basically have a role that you're helping your team with. Right, so there's going to be these cubes that are spreading across the board, <laughs> infecting different Which is not cities good. and countries, <laughs> and you're going to have to try to remove the disease and cure it if possible. There's a lot of different versions mm -hmm. of Pandemic, and I think if you want to go and look on the internets, mm -hmm. uh, dice versions and different... Even, Geography, yeah. places, so lots of different options for this one. It's been around for a long time, and people really enjoy it. So the simpler version is Forbidden Island that we picked from the same designer. This is for two to four players and plays in about 40 minutes. Players are traveling around this modular board working together to collect treasure, but time is of the essence because the island is sinking. Now, the game has different difficulty levels, so you can start it off easier or try to do something that's a little bit more challenging. And the fact that you can arrange the tiles differently for the island makes it have a lot of replayability. Yeah, lots of replayability, and I love the components. And it all fits in this really cool tin box. Number three. Potion Explosion from Horrible Guild. So this is for two to four players, plays about 45 minutes, mm -hmm. and you are basically students, like <laughs> wizarding type students, yes. and you have this dispenser of marbles. You're going to take one marble out of the dispenser, and then the ones that crash together, if they are the same color, you get to take those marbles as many times as similar ones crash together. Yes. And you're trying to collect those marbles to then place onto your potions to complete them. And they need certain colors of marbles for those potions. I really like this game too, because as you complete those potions, you are basically later in the game can drink those <laughs> potions to give you like special powers. I think that, mm -hmm. I think people really enjoy that, the tactile nature of the game. Right, actually having those marbles in your hand. I think this will also appeal to players who play a lot of mobile games, stuff like Candy Crush or mm -hmm. Bejeweled, because it has that similar aspect of trying to make those matches. Speaking of that, Potion Explosion actually has a really, really nice app that you can mm -hmm. download on your phone. And maybe you could even have a friend download on their phone, try it out, and they might like it so much that they go and purchase the game, mm -hmm. Potion Explosion. So the simpler game that we chose for Potion Explosion is... Sugar Blast. This is for two to four players and plays in about 30 minutes from Simon. Players are switching candies trying to make matches of three or more. The game will definitely remind you of those apps like Candy Crush and Bejeweled because you are basically taking candies and they're sliding down. Right. Interesting thing is that the board tilts in the direction of the player. So mm, on my turn, true. the candies are going to slide towards me, but on Kevin's turn, when he tilts it, the candies will slide towards like him, that. so it's always changing the layout of the board. The candy theme is super fun, and the candies are super cute. Fun little game. Yep, and very family-friendly and easy. Number two. 
Azul from Next Move Games. This is for two to four players, plays in about 30 to 45 minutes. And on your turn, you are going to be taking tiles from the middle of the table on these different little factory boards. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna put the tiles into your own mosaic board in order to get points. Basically, you're choosing what type of tile do I want, but you do have to take all of that kind from the place where you take it, and then deciding which row of my board do I want to put it on. Yeah, so I really like the design of Azul. Mm -hmm. I, I think it just draws people in right away. If you saw that on a shelf, I think it like mm -hmm. really captures your attention. The three-dimensional plastic tiles. Oh yeah, when you open the box, the, the components are really nice. I, I like what they did with mm -hmm. the components. It's not just wooden like mm -hmm. uh, or tokens or things like that. Mm -hmm. It's very nice, heavy, the bag's nice. I think it really uh, ups the playing experience mm -hmm. uh, for the players. Right, now this is one where what you do on your turn is pretty simple, but the scoring can be a little hard to grasp the first time, so it's probably one that you definitely want to teach to a new player. So the simpler version that we chose is Sushi Go. This is for two to five players and takes about 15 minutes to play. The similarities between these two games are there's some drafting involved, a different kind of drafting. Mm -hmm. You're drafting cards and you're collecting sets of these sushi cards, whereas you're collecting sets of colors in Azul. Mm -hmm. You'll be passing cards from person to person, scoring points based on different combinations of the sushi you collect. Yeah, this game is very simple. What you do on your turn, you choose a card from the ones that were passed to you and you put it down in front of you and you hope that eventually you get cards that work well together for points. Yeah, the art is really mm -hmm. super cute, the little sushis on here. Mm -hmm. And I love this little tin box, it's really fun. Number one. Ticket to Ride from Days of Wonder. This is for two to five players, plays in about an hour. In the game, you are collecting colored cards to then be able to lay your trains on certain colored tracks in order to complete destinations from city to city to complete your tickets to be able to get points. Now, as you can see here, there's a lot of different versions. We only have a few things out here, but there's two main base games, the America USA map and then the Europe map. Yeah, both of those are awesome games to start with. Then there are lots of expansions. We really love Pennsylvania. That's one of my favorites. Add stocks. Each expansion adds something new and different to the game. But there are also some easier versions of Ticket to Ride, and that's Ticket to Ride New York, Ticket to Ride London. I believe there's also an Amsterdam yeah, version. And these only take about 15 minutes to play. So a very scaled back version of the game. So that might even be a really good entry point into the franchise. Why is this our number one? I think that the ease of play on your turn, you're either taking cards or laying trains or you're picking up more of those destination tickets. So you don't have tons and tons of choices on your turn, but it's still strategic. I think for me, it's our number one as well because of the theme. I think the train theme is just nostalgic for a lot of people. I think it just really draws would draw people in. All right, our simpler version is actually called Trans America, and we picked another simpler version, Karuba. Trans America is for two to six players and takes about 30 minutes to play. Players are completing their mission cards, and this is sort of like pure route building. You're just trying to lay your train tracks, trying to get to the different cities. Right, there are no cards that you're trying to collect, like in Ticket to Ride. Basically, you're just placing two track pieces every turn, and you can kind of, at certain parts in the game, connect to other people's tracks, and you're not wanting to <laughs> help other people, but you're wanting to connect to what they have. So it, it's a very interesting, but very simple game. And it has a train theme to it, mm -hmm. just like Ticket to Ride. The reason we brought Karuba out as well, this is from Haba. This is for two to four players. It has the route building where everyone sort of starts the same and you're building a route to the different temples. Yeah, it, I would say it kind of has a bingo-like oh, yeah. mechanic where one player is drawing a tile, everyone has the same types of tiles, and so when a player draws that tile, everyone simultaneously places that same tile on their board. So it's a matter of trying to build your route the best so you can get to the temples first. 
and I love the jungle theme. Really fun. That rounds out our top 10. Let's move to honorable mentions. Code names. I wouldn't put this even in the honorable mention list, but it's a party game. It even says number one party game, but I love code names. <laughs> Disqualified from the list. Yes. Um, one of the genres or categories of games that we haven't mentioned yet are the roll and write and flip and write type games. Um, I think these can be good entry level games because everyone's kind of doing the same thing mm -hmm. or getting access to the, the same options. We have silver and gold. You flip a Tetris like card and draw that shape into yes. your uh, card, trying to fill the card. And then there's Dizzle. This is dice drafting, and you're actually placing the dice on your sheet and then Xing out places to try to get to certain spots before other players. Uh, both of these games we've played a lot with my family, with my parents. Mm -hmm. They love them, and they've been introducing these to their friends. Parks almost made it in our top 10 list. It, this game is where you are taking your workers down this path and you're collecting resources and you are visiting different parks. Love, love, love this game, but the price point is what nudged it out. Mm -hmm. The components are, are wonderful components. The artwork is beautiful. It won a Tantrum House Award. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would definitely add parks to uh, a gateway, you know, introducing it to people, but just because of the price point we had to it had to not be. It didn't even, fit our requirements. Didn't fit our requirements. So yeah. Um, another one I wanted to mention is Diamonds from Stronghold Games, mm -hmm. and this is very similar to traditional card games, something like Spades or Hearts, mm -hmm. but it's just a little bit more. Each suit has its own power, so when you win a trick with it, you get to do a certain action. We've also played this with my parents a lot, and if players have already that base knowledge of mm -hmm. the traditional card games, it isn't that much more difficult to add on the extra layer of complexity. If you watched our recent tantrum talks where we talk about what makes a good gateway game, you should check that out, but I'm going to spoil something right now. <laughs> Will said that Hanabi is his number one gateway game because it fits a lot of those categories. Hanabi is where players are trying to uh, get cards in a specific order, numbered cards in a specific order, but the problem is you can't see your own cards. So you are giving clues to the other players to uh, basically get those cards out of your hands in the right order. And it's cooperative, so you're all working together. Yeah, you're together. all working together, so that's fun. And the firework theme is kind of cool too. Now we realized that we didn't have any worker placement games on our top 10 list, so we- I love worker placement games! Yeah. <laughs> we looked at several of them and decided to land on Asking for Troubles from Breaking Games. This is for two to seven players, so it does play mm -hmm. a higher uh, count of players. And it's fairly easy to see what you need to do to get the card. You're getting the resources yes. to then um, complete the cards. And also it has a bumping mechanic instead of a complete blocking mechanic. So if someone else is in the space I want, I can go there. I'm just bumping that worker back to the player. So now the player doesn't have to take an action to pull that worker back. So it does benefit that player if I choose to do it. But it's also a little friendlier because you're not completely blocked out. I like the theme too. It's got a fun little lighthearted theme. Yeah, kind of the aliens are coming <laughs> to uh, cause trouble. So those were not only our top 10, but some honorable mentions. What gateway games that didn't make it in our top 10 do you enjoy introducing to people? Let us know in the comments below. What gateway games got you into the hobby? We'd love to know that too. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.